Hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to start uh, pretty soon. So uh, I'm Victor, and I work at, at Docker. And today I'm presenting with uh, Tim. He works at uh, Mesosphere. And today we're going to talk about Docker Swarm on Mesos. So quick agenda for today. We first, we're going to introduce uh, Docker Swarm, explain what Docker Swarm is. Then we're going to explain um, the benefits of uh, using Swarm on top of Mesos. After that, uh, Tim is going to talk about GCOS and how to install and set up uh, Swarm on top of GCOS. And we're going to end by a quick demo. So what is Swarm? Uh, Swarm is a project uh, made by, by Docker, which basically allows you to run containers on multiple hosts. Um, all using like uh, Docker native tools. And uh, just a, a quick schema today, if you want to use only Docker tools and if you have like multiple machines, you're going to take the Docker CLI, you're going to talk to one machine, start a few containers, then you're going to change uh, IP and port, talk to the other, another machine, and so on and so on. And it's, uh, it's, it's really not practical at all when you want to list all the containers you have on your cluster. It just, you can't, you have to connect one by one. So that's why we created a Swarm. Basically, Swarm is um, uh, the tool that is going to, let's say, manage all your nodes. You're going to take the Docker CLI and, and talk to Swarm, and you will see the state of, of your entire cluster. So Swarm, in a nutshell, is going to take multiple Docker engines, and it's going to create one, one virtual engine, and it serves the, the standard uh, Docker API. So any tool that uh, today is working on, on Docker, on the Docker daemon, so it can be the CLI, it can be Docker Compose, it can be like any tool, um, are working on Swarm. So a tool that was before uh, meant for like single host can now be used for multi-host on a cluster. It's uh, extremely easy to get started and uh, the most important uh, for, for today's talk is batteries included but swappable. Because you can use um, Swarm uh, on its own, Swarm at the, at the, at the cluster uh, scheduler, at the cluster scheduler backend. But if you want, uh, you can completely remove that, swap that, and put another uh, scheduler backend instead. And uh, today we're going to talk about, about Mesos. Because uh, let's say you already have a, a Mesos cluster running, but uh, you want to be able to use Docker tools on your cluster, you can use Swarm to do exactly that. So quick timeline. Swarm started uh, in October last year as a proof of concept. And around uh, June, uh, we released the first Mesos uh, integration. It, it was, it's uh, experimental for now. And we aim to have this uh, integration stable by the end of the year. So yeah, as I was saying, it's the goal of uh, the Mesos integration in Swarm is to bring all the Docker workflow, all the Docker tools that you know on, on your Mesos cluster. So, quick example, uh, here you have a Mesos cluster, at the top you have uh, tons of uh, Mesos agents, in the middle you have uh, Mesos masters, and at the bottom you have a few frameworks like Marathon or, or Spark. Uh, you can have Swarm as a framework, and then you can took the, use the Docker CLI to talk to Swarm, so when you do a Docker run, it's going to ask Swarm to do a run, and Swarm is going to use uh, offers from the Mesos master and just launch a task. And again, the goal here is to have any tool that uh, uses Docker uh, API and Docker CLI to, to work on your Mesos cluster. So through Swarm, you can use, for example, Docker Compose and, and, and start uh, your application on your, on your Mesos cluster. Quick, uh, quick uh, talk about the, the internals of, of Swarm. Um, it's uh, quite simple, actually. So we, first, we're going to receive offers from uh, the Mesos master like any other framework. Then we're going to apply some filters to exclude offers. Like, for example, we have the, the port filter. So if you want to do a Docker run, if you want to start a container, and you want to, to start a web container, so you need the, the port 80, for example. We could, thanks to the port filter, we're going to exclu exclude all the offers where uh, AT is not available. We also have constraints and affinities. I'm going to talk about that in, in just a minute. And after that, so you, we get a subset of offers. We are going to use a strategy to like, rank the offers and, and pick the one we, 
we want. Uh, today we have three strategies, uh, bean pack, spreading, and random. So, for example, for, for bean pack, we are, we are going to pick the offer where on this, on this agent there are already uh, the most container running. So that's something we can, you, can, you can tweak. Um, again, it's very important to understand that if you know how to use uh, Docker today, you will know how to use a Swarm, and you will know how to use a Swarm and Mesos. So if you want to start a container and you need one gigabyte of, of RAM, it's uh, like nothing fancy. It's just as, as Docker, uh, Docker run dash M one gig. And this is going to, um, through Swarm, it's going to, to pick an offer on Mesos that has at least one gigabyte of memory available. Same for CPU. You can do, do Docker run dash C one, and it's going to find an offer with one CPU. And for the ports, I was just uh, talking about that. When you, when you expose the port, we're going to, to pick the, the right offer that has this port available. We also have uh, constraints and affinities. Um, first example, you want to start a container on a specific agent, for example. So we have uh, the node constraint. When you start your container, you just pass a, a constraint like node equal agent uh, 04. And we're going to look at the offer we have and use an offer that is on agent 04. If there is no offer for this agent, uh, we're going to wait a bit. It's uh, dynamite configurable. And after, we're going to, to fail, saying we don't have offer to run your, your container. Uh, same for um, a custom label. You can say, I want to run my, my container on, on like a region U US East, for example. And uh, if you tagged your, your Mesos agent uh, the right way, we, we saying we're going to pick offers just when the this, this uh, label is, is true. We also have affinities and anti-affinities. Um, again, simple example. Let's say you want to start a, a Redis cluster. You're going to start by uh, like launching the master. So the first line is uh, dash dash name Redis master. And after, you're going to start your slave. But you don't want your slave, of course, to end up on the same machine as at the master. Because if, if the machine goes down, you lose everything. So you can use uh, affinities or anti-affinities in that case. So you say when you start the slave, I don't want to be on a machine where there is already a container uh, that uh, starts by Redis running. So uh, it's going to exclude all the offers that are not, are not uh, that does not uh, match this affinity. And then I'm going to let uh, Tim talk more about Mesos. Cool. Thanks, Victor. Hello. It's probably better. Oh? Cool. So why Docker Swarm on Mesos? So as you can see, Docker Swarm gives you a really nice experience. Because if you already know how to use a Docker client, you launch containers before with Docker run, you build your images, Docker build, you know, able to push to registry, the whole workflow is, is, is been phenomenal, right? You can able to push your images out there and run your images really easily with a Docker workflow. Um, but when it comes to running on a, a cluster, I think Docker Swarm gives it a direct Docker client experience out of the box. But you want to make it on a scale. If you want to have a thousand of nodes, you want to run your, your cluster of your containers on, on a huge machine, a huge, a huge data center. Right? This is where Meso's strength comes in. We have been battle tested. We've been used in production in many different places. Have you heard, maybe on the keynotes uh, from all the different talks, you've seen everybody is using Docker, using Meso's in a lot of their environments and data centers with thousands of machines, 100,000 machines, right? Stack of Siri and things like that. So we've proven the scalability and proven the, the productionness of your cluster to use Docker containers with you. So I think, personally, I feel like the best benefits of viewing Docker Swarm plus Mesos is you get the benefits of all the Docker development that's happening on the Docker side, right? They're doing networking plugins. They're doing storage plugins. They're doing a lot of efforts on the Docker um, ecosystem with the tools like Compose, Kinematics, all these things are really helping to use the Docker client's experience to be much richer. On the other side, you see we have talks around oversubscription, persistent volumes, all these nice features are going into Mesos. All of a sudden, you kind of marry these two ecosystems all together. You can able to imagine using your Docker clients, running your containers, and using oversubscribed resources on your Mesos cluster, right? And this is all seamless to you. You can actually tell Mesos, use persistent volumes with their current container to do X, Y, and Z. Right? 
all these rich, rich experiences that you can able to do from Docker and, and with Mesos, now all of a sudden you can able to use them together. So, and of course the Docker client experience is what we all learn, that's how we all learn Docker in the first place. Docker run, Docker build, all these simple command lines that we're able to know how to use Docker. You simply just use the same Docker client, point to Docker Storm, run it with Mesos, you run your, your containers in your uh, data center just right away. So I think that's awesome. So the next thing I want to mention is DCOS. Uh, you've probably all heard of DCOS through our keynotes and some other talks already. Uh, what I want to mention again is that with the power of DCOS, right, we have Mesos, we have Docker Storm, but with DCOS, it makes you running all the different frameworks for Storm, like example, to run on a DCOS much more simpler. So I will show you how to install uh, Storm onto DCOS in a quick demo very, uh, very soon. But just a recap, if you've somehow never really heard of DCOS up until this point of the, of the conference, right, dot, the, the DCOS is what we were building at Mesosphere. Uh, called the data center operating system. And the data center operating system is trying to wrap uh, Mesos. So you're interacting with your Mesos cluster uh, through our richer experiences, through our command lines, through our dashboards, and we give you service discovery, we give you a lot of nicer experience, like you can package install, Hadoop, Spark, uh, all these other services on your Mesos cluster, just doing DCOS package install. So what does this mean with Swarm is that you're able to DCOS package install Swarm. You install in your Mesos cluster right away with one command, and we have also a command line to help you configure your Docker clients. And then just simply just use your Docker client from that point on. Docker run, you know, some command, some uh, image with your command, and it's just running in your cluster for you. And you're able to go to Mesos UI, and you can use all these features from both Docker Compose and Mesos right away. So I just want to talk about um, how data center operating system, or DCOS, is able to do all this magic. Right? We, we have something called the universe uh, in a DCOS to able to know what are all the available packages that are in D the DCOS. So when I do DCOS package install, where do I find the Docker image? Uh, what kind of command should I run? How much resources should I use? And if, if I have a specific command line for this framework, uh, where do I find it? So all this specification, and all this packaging information is all packaged in something we call the Mesos for Universe. Uh, I want to show you this because I want to show you, like, when we implement Docker Storm into DCOS, it was actually really simple. This is one, we really need two JSON files. One JSON file like this tells you what the framework is. You know, this is Storm, the description, where do I find the logos, and things like that. Licensing and, and, and stuff like that. And most importantly is we need because we run every framework on Marathon, it's basically a Marathon config. How do I launch this framework? Give me this Marathon, marathon JSON file. Um, you can see there's health checks, there's um, instances, there's, there's resources required as default. Of course, all of these are overridable. Um, and that, with these templates, then running Swarm on your Mesos cluster with DCOS is really simple. You just DCOS package install Swarm, like we said, we talked about. You set up your, your clients just by uh, calling our DCOS Swarm uh, client, which sets up some environmental variables to point to, we automatically figure out where do we launch your Docker Swarm daemon at. So you don't need to figure out oh, which host or which slave is running my package, uh, my Swarm. Uh, we automatically set up Docker host environmental variable to point to the right blocks. And that's really, that's really all it is. And then, yeah, just run Docker run a simple command uh, container, and you have Docker Storm run Mesos. Uh, so let me actually do a quick demo. I pre-recorded this already of how easy it is to install Docker Storm into Mesos. Okay, so if you go to mesosphere.com, you know, if you, we have a community edition that's free. So you can simply just download and run your uh, a Mesosphere DCOS cluster on your AWS uh, with just a few clicks. So just roll this up. So you can choose a community edition and launch up a DCOS cluster with Amazon. And then basically, just once you have your DCOS cluster running, I'm just gonna show you quickly about what the UIs look like. So this, you get a DCOS cluster like this. Right? This is your dashboard. You can see how much CPU, memory, and your tasks. Uh, basically average accumulated statistics about your DCOS cluster. So what's more important is that 
we have services, that's part of DCOS, of all the ones you currently installed and how well they're doing. All right, so just right now it's just only a marathon. So I want to show you like how easy it is to install the uh, Swarm, right, DCOS package install Swarm. That installs the Swarm daemon by marathon, which will be running in your cluster. And your cluster, once it's running and installed, it's just simply set up your Docker host environment or variable. And yeah, and then just run Docker info. As you can see, although this acts like just another Docker daemon, it's actually a Docker Swarm running in your cluster with Mesos as its backend. So you actually get offers instead of just using all the available cluster resources um, like you have before in Docker's daemon. So yeah, that's, that's all the magic you need to do. So uh, one caveat that I want to point out, before we just all go home and just try this, is that there's, uh, we need to expose the Docker daemon HTTP ports, which is not by default enabled yet on DCOS. So there's one little magic we did is just enable that uh, remote port on a daemon, and that's pretty much all you need to do. From that point on, you just need to just do all the Docker DCOS package install storm and run your client. That, uh, Victor will do a demo for you. Okay, so I'm going to try to demo that live. Hopefully, everything is going to work. So as uh, Tim just mentioned and just uh, showed you, I have uh, a Mesos uh, DCOS cluster running. Uh, currently, I have uh, three frameworks, a Marathon, Spark, and Swarm. They're all running, its checks are healthy, and I have uh, four, four nodes. Uh, I'm going to uh, set up a few Spark tasks Oh, that's so the demo is nicer. And in, in, this, um, in this demo, I'm going to um, use a visualizer made by, by, made by Mesosphere uh, just to show you, so you see tasks coming and going. So in this, this, this visualizer, tasks started by Marathon are in purple, in Spark uh, are in like uh, orange, red, and in Swarm in blue. So right now you have, uh, as uh, Tim mentioned, every framework in DCOS is running inside Marathon. So Spark and Swarm are here in, in purple. And I just uh, started some uh, computation in Spark, so you will see some uh, tasks on Spark uh, coming and, and going. So um, here I, I, I just did exactly what uh, Tim said. So I did uh, DCOS uh, Swarm env, and everything is configured. So I can do uh, Docker info. Uh, as Tim said, you have offers. If I do a Docker version, uh, you can see that uh, I'm talking to uh, Swarm, so it's not a Docker daemon, as Tim said, it's uh, a Swarm daemon. So let's do a quick, quick example. I'm going to uh, start a Redis container. So it's a simple uh, Docker run. In the background, we're going to name it Redis. Here we are, I'm going to ask for like 256 uh, megs of RAM. And I'm, yeah, bigger, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, simple Docker run, dash D background. I'm naming, naming it Redis. I'm asking for 256 megs of RAM. And I'm going to expose the Redis port on, uh, for example, uh, 31500 and use the Redis image. So when I do that, uh, as you can see, it was, it's as fast as just using Docker. The container is uh, started. Uh, you see the, the blue square on the, on the visualizer, so it was actually started in Swarm uh, on Mesos. If I do a PS, uh, it's, it's hard to read here, but uh, basically it's the regular uh, Docker PS output. You have the container ID, you have uh, the name, you see it's running on this, this IP and port. Um, and then you can do pretty much every command uh, you know on Docker, uh, but on Mesos. So if I want the logs of my container, I can do Docker logs Redis. And uh, I have the, the logs of Redis. Uh, I can do like Docker port if I want to see all just the port of this Redis, con Redis container. And you see that uh, what I asked, the Redis port is exposed on 31500. So on the Docker side, everything is working as, as expected. I can quickly go in the, on the Mesos UI. You see my task is here, so the name is here. It's running, and in the sandbox, I have uh, the same logs. 
So basically, my container was uh, started uh, through, through Swarm. Uh, now let's talk about, um, about Docker Compose. So Docker Compose, if you don't know what, what it is, it's a, it's a tool made by Docker. It basically lets you describe your application, your entire stack on a single YAML file, and then in one command, it's going to uh, take the YAML and, and start the container. So here I have, um, I have a, a demo uh, Compose file. It's uh, pretty simple. It, it has like two services. The first one, it's a dashboard. It's a web UI, so I'm, I'm going to expose a port. Uh, it's connected to the Redis I just started. And on the, thir the other service, is the worker that requires uh, just 20 megs of RAM. And uh, again, it's connected to the Redis server. They are both using uh, Docker images uh, that uh, are pulled from the, from the hub. And um, so I don't have anything to configure. If, if Docker is working on, on Swarm, Compose is going to work on Swarm. So I'm going to do a Docker Compose up, so dash D for the, for the background. This is going to path the YAML and start uh, the two containers. So you see um, the worker was started and uh, the, the dashboard uh, should be here any minute. Uh, if I do a Docker PS, you see that it's not working. <laughs> uh, let me quickly look. I'm going to switch to a, a demo because uh, I knew this would happen. Uh, so let's start over. So yeah, I'm starting the Redis. I'm looking at the logs. Then I'm doing the Docker Compose up. Uh, the two containers, uh, yeah, I hope it's big enough. I'm going to explain. Two containers are starting. Then you can use Docker Compose to list the container. In the view, it's scoped within the, the application. So here I have only two lines. I have uh, the worker running and the dashboard running. And what's interesting with uh, Compose, and you can scale up and down uh, containers. So here I'm, I'm currently scaling the worker container to uh, four instances. I could go higher, but uh, I have a, a small cluster running here. So as you can see on the right, it's uh, starting the, the, the three more worker containers. Uh, if I do a Docker Compose PS, again, I will see uh, the five container running, and um, I, can, I can scale down. So here, it's, it's very, again, it's very important to understand that on Mesos, you can have like many different kinds of workloads. Like here, I have like Spark tasks running, and uh, through the, the Docker CI, I'm able to start containers, and through like Docker Compose, I'm able to scale up and down containers uh, really easily. And everything is, is uh, running on, uh, on Mesos. So um, here we go. Uh, thank you. Do you have any, any questions? <laughs> yes? So I would say today, on Mesos, you can uh, start Docker container with the Docker containerizer. So you can have Mesos that is uh, running Docker containers on the side. But like the entry point, like the, the like whole developer experience, uh, it's, it's not Docker. So basically with Swarm, you can take the Docker CLI, talk to Swarm, that is going to talk to Mesos, use the Mesos uh, high scalability for in the end uh, starting Docker containers. So it means you're using Docker on your laptop, when you start the container, you're actually using the Docker client. When it's running, it's actually using the, the Docker daemon. But in the middle, all the, the scheduling decision and, and complexity is made by, by Mesos. Yeah, so just to add, just add to that. Um, so I don't know if you guys got a question, but the question is, why would you use Swarm if there's Docker integration to Mesos already? Um, so I originally, actually, I worked on the Docker and Mesos integration in the first place. So what we did when we integrated Docker into Mesos it's allow all the frameworks of Mesos to be able to launch Docker containers. So Marathon, Kronos, HDFS, you know, every framework that you write with Mesos, 
you're able to describe a task info that has Docker in there. So every task you launch could be a Docker container. So with the integration, if even if you see the Spark jobs that was running in this demo, they're all launched in Docker containers, actually. Because we, once we integrated Mesos and Docker, any task you use in Mesos could be a Docker container with image and commands. So Docker Swarm, though, in the, in the other side, is it's a native experience for using Docker clients. Because if you want to use a Mesos framework, or, or you actually launch a, a container just on a Mesos cluster, you need a framework, right? You need, you need some framework to be running to describe a task, to get an offer, and do all that, all that interaction for you. But Docker clients, since we integrated Docker Swarm on Mesos, that means you, as a user using our laptop, using Docker Run, just some container in my cluster, it just works. You don't need any other framework running. Just talk to a Docker remote API that's running like, like Swarm, and your, your container is just running your cluster just right away. Any other questions? Yes? Yeah, so, so the question is, Docker Swarm does its own scheduling, right? There's constraints and all these things, and Mesos has its own scheduling. Of course, we give offers to these frameworks. So how does it work together? Do we disable something or not? Um, so when we designed Swarm on Mesos, we actually really thought hard about how do we combine the two scheduling together, right? It's obviously, you don't get the full cluster uh, like what Docker Swarm without Mesos looks like, right? Um, so what we actually end up doing is we let Mesos tell Swarm what's the partial view of the cluster look like, right? You get number of offers, and you can able to use Docker Swarm scheduling logic, and we didn't actually do any ports or any uh, sort of uh, you know, new implementation of Docker Swarm scheduling. We use the exact same code when Docker Swarm is with, using without Mesos, so all the ports, affinities, the, the, the you know, the bin packing or the random, you know, they're able to use the same logic, but not on the whole cluster, but maybe on a partial view of the offers. So it's a, it's a trade off, of course. You know, you, we need to be able to hoard on some offers, right, to give you some more complete picture, or maybe to wait for some available uh, resources to come in. But we're working a lot on the Meso side to give you more uh, complete view, maybe through optimistic offers, maybe for oversubscription you'll be able to get more complete picture of a cluster than right now is more of a pessimistic offer sending out to stuff. So I think right now, that's how it works right now, but in the future, once we in, uh, implement more features on Mesos, so all the frameworks have much more control of what they want to do with your Mesos cluster resources, um, this will be much more powerful. You know, the, the resources, the scheduling on the Swarm side will make much more sense. Yeah. So currently, no, it, it doesn't work like that. Uh, today, Swarm doesn't do monitoring. Uh, it's something we want to add to, to Swarm in general. So even outside of, of Mesos in the Swarm, without Mesos, we are going to add this feature. And as soon as we add a feature in, in Swarm, it's going to, to work on the, on the Mesos backend. So yeah, at some point, it's going to restart containers. We'll be able to say in some way, like I want three containers, and I want always to have three containers. And just to add a little bit to that is Swarm developers themselves are working on persistence and HA on their side too. So you basically get what the marathon does for you for free once Swarm has persistence and HA built in. We can just able to relaunch your task container again. Um, but that hasn't been done yet. Yes? Any question? So yeah, today definitely the question was, uh, can we say like uh, Swarm is today it's more used for like development, a small task, and, and marathon for a big task. So today yes, of course, because uh, Swarm it's like the Mesos integration for Swarm it's currently experimental, so we wouldn't advise anybody to use integration yet. Um, yeah, I, I would say Swarm it's a very good way to if you have a a Mesos cluster running already, but uh, you want to like start containers on the side and, and basically give the, the, the Docker, a Docker endpoint 
on your Mesos cluster, you could use Swarm to, to do that, yeah. Yes? So Compose is going to talk to one swarm, but in the end, swarm is going to receive offers that, that runs on multiple agents. So if you're using um, a Compose file that doesn't have any links or interdependencies, containers are going to end up on any node. Um, again, it's something we're working on, but yeah, today, for example, if you have to share some volumes between two containers in, in the Compose file, um, our Swarm is going to put them on the same agent, the same node. Cool. Cool. Thank you.